This is Lord Bemrose, the man responsible for building the world's craziest Subaru, and now he's on a new project. In a garage in Lower Hutt, we find something that definitely shouldn't be going together. It's such an unlikely combination, it's made a global motoring empire rather angry. A Ferrari, and not just any old Ferrari. Glamour. Prestige. And glory. Oh, let's just fuck it up, I want to hear it. Yes, you heard that right. This is a rotary swapped Ferrari 456, which now has a Nissan S14 front end on it and is complete. I've been following him on Instagram for years and I've always wondered how on earth he affords to build these cars and what motivates him to do this. So I booked a flight to New Zealand to find out. I am here in Wellington, New Zealand with the one and only Lord Bemrose and we have three, four cars in this garage, three vehicles in that garage, which we're gonna go through and talk about because these are the craziest builds. Introduce yourself, what, who are you, what do you do? My name is Ruben, my name is Ruben Bemrose. Um, I'm in the automotive trade in New Zealand, so I've been selling car parts and building cars for some time, so. What kind of car parts do you sell? I mainly sell high performance um, performance parts, so a lot of billet parts, intake manifolds, ECUs, and stuff like that. And that's the company. Yeah, Hypertune. Hypertune so I'm Performance. The New Zealand dealer for it. So. And then in your free time, or is this your work as well? Uh, this is more my free time. Just these cars. So they're just my toys. So we'll start with the first one right here, the Rolls Royce. This is a Silver Seraph. Uh, Silver Spirit. Okay. Had this for probably nine years, so I bought it from an estate sale. So old Badger died and I bought it cheap. I've always wanted one, ever since I was a kid. I've always wanted an old shit white Rolls Royce. And as soon as one popped up that was leaking everything, I was like, we're on. This is it. So what have you done to this no, car? I haven't really done much to it, but I had a lot of leaks in the factory suspension because it's all hydraulic. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I didn't really want to fix it all. And you fix a couple of leaks and then you'd have more leaks and then you fix more leaks. I was like, I'm just going to bag it. So, so that's what you did? Yeah. So you can't really get a kit for them, like a bolt-on kit. So mm -hmm. I kind of just had to it up a little bit so it's got a tesla bag kit with r33 gdr lower cups and machine some other stuff and bolt it in and off we go and if people want to ask you questions on how they can bag theirs i will happily tell them how to bag one of these it smells just like mine old people <laughs> and you cannot get that smell out you leave it in the garage for four years like i have the smell doesn't go away maybe you know i'm a kiwi my family lives here that's why i'm even here I can get my car out here. And we do a project together. I would wreck it. I would love to wreck your car. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the next car that you, somebody would say you've wrecked this one. Yeah. This is a Ferrari 456, basically. One of the most unloved Ferraris, but it's still a V12. Yep. What's yeah, the story on this? Before we get to the front, well, how did you get this car? Uh, so I was originally on Trade Me, which is like your version of eBay and stuff like that. And I saw someone was selling um, parts off off one, like an intake manifold and some hubs and some other weird stuff. And I was like, oh, that's real interesting. And I looked at his listings and there was like a picture of it in the background. And all I could see was like a bare shell, dented, heavily damaged front and back. Could probably do something with it. So I ended up ringing the guy and he was like, 1500 bucks, come take it off my lawn. So I was like, hell yeah. So we got four of my mates, jumped in the car. We drove all the way out to Auckland. He dragged it out, put it on a trailer and brought it home. I was like, I'm a Ferrari owner now. That's like $700 to have a Ferrari. I mean, anyone would buy that, right? Just to say you own a yeah, Ferrari. Yeah. Got it home, had a play around. And then the more I looked at it, I'm like, oh, this looks very messy. Pizza stuff looks the same. So speaking of Nissan, I mean, <laughs> we will get to what's happened to the front of this car, but on the back, you've cut it out. You've put a wing in here. You've put a massive diffuser on it, exhaust system and F1 brake light. Do you do all of this yourself? Yeah, so we did the majority of it myself. Um, I'm just like, I've got heaps of mates that are good fabricators and stuff like that. So if I can't do it, I'll find one of my mates who's better than me, actually. It's got BBS racing slicks on it. From a GT3 Porsche Cup car. We open it up. You've got is this um plexiglass windows? Yeah, only because we smashed the factory stuff by accident. They've got a full roll cage in here. Oh my goodness. Just explain what's going on okay. here, because I don't know. Alright, so we've got an S15 dash out of a Sylvia, because I tend to put these in every car I ever do, because I just think they're real nice dashes. Race tech seats, adjustable in-car sway bars. So they're all blades, so I can on the fly change how the car feels. It's got a HGT six-speed sequential gearbox. 
uh, Motec dash, Motec keypad, Toyota Yaris steering column, like an electric column. And how much was this transmission? Oh, you'd spend 25 pretty fast on any sequential, to be honest, real quick, by the time you get it in the car. NOS back here? Yeah, yeah. So originally I had that for the Subi back in the day, and I used other bottles, and then I had that and I was like, I don't need it, but I have it. So it just got all the scraps from the other car, and I was like, oh, we'll put it back. Oh my goodness. So it's all fun and done. This, this is not a Ferrari engine at all. <laughs> what have you put in here? Yeah, this is a Rotary 13B. So it's a bridge ported, dowed and studded, uh, like a RX-7 engine. Is Ferrari mad at you? Everyone likes to think that they'd be mad at me. They probably don't care. And the uh, front end of this is also not a Ferrari. What did you do? That is from a facelift S14. So in this end, Sylvia. So originally when I got it, I didn't have most of the front end on it. Um, and last time I actually took it to the track a couple of years ago, I tank slapped it down a wall and damaged the front and the back quite heavily. And a front end for these is like, I think it's like 8,000 pounds for a bonnet. It's 4,000 pounds for a bumper, like 2,000 pounds of headlights. I'm like, I'm not spending like 40 grand on a front yeah. end. On it. And I was like, what can I get a front end on that I can easily get more stuff in? And if I break it or smash the front, I can just get another one. So I was like, that's it. Everything else in this car is missing. And I actually think it looks better than the yeah, stock. I, I don't actually like the look of the front. They're quite an ugly car. No, they are. They are. They're just big and yuck. So This looks so much yeah, better. Like Ferrari is going to absolutely hate us saying this. Yeah, and everyone was kind of, that I kind of pitched it to with my friend group, was like, oh, I don't know, man. The, the headlights are quite squarey. Like, oh, I don't know. It's quite a roundy car. And I was like, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And as soon as we did, as soon as I painted it. It looks amazing. I was like, this is like. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Full front end fiberglass molded, which you did yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then got the nice Ferrari badges on here. At least you didn't put Nissan badges on, then they would have lost it. Craftsmanship is, I would say, insane. Yeah, it's not bad for a little race car, right? Off to the races. Yeah. Speaking of this car, I mean, this is the world's craziest Subaru in my mind, without a doubt. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, was... what have you done? What What was this um, car originally? This, this car was my first car. So my father literally bought this for me when I was younger. This was my first car to learn to drive manual on and I started modifying it when I was little. When I was real young, I would have been 20 years old, I think. And now you finished? Yeah, I've, I've definitely so much, so much more to do. I literally don't think there's anything you could do to, like the diffuser down here, there's just nothing. You've got a parachute. It's just right up in there. You can see it slicks. So I mean, winter's quick diff, so it's people engineering diff, so it's a big, I think it's a big 10 inch diff. We cut every bit of metal in the, the floor on the firewall of the car, so it was completely gutted. In hindsight now, I should have built a tube car and dropped a body on it, mm. but at the time we were like, ah, just cutting shit out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then cut the firewall, cut everything out, mounted the motor where I wanted it, and I went from there. Got money later, and uh, there's these years of work in this car. That might be the biggest understatement I've ever heard. Ruben has spent over 10 years building this car piece by piece. I've seen the ones that have been done before where they've taken a wagon or a, a four door and made it a two door. It just doesn't look right. Just mm -hmm. the scaling doesn't look right to me. So I was like, I really want a functioning door. Um, yeah. Which was another weeks of work to make it not look so ugly but you've got two nos bottles back there yeah so that's a bit of a funny one so the reason i got those is they were originally out of kim.com mercedes when they got repossessed so they went to mercedes new zealand oh, i probably shouldn't say this but anyway um they got taken out for whatever reason and my mate that works there was like do you want these you're a car guy and i was like hell yeah so i got some flashy bottles with the electric openers and so it's out of Kim.com's car. I mean, look at the work in the back here. A lot of money in this, not even just a lot of money, there's a lot of time in it. Like, Thousands. I can't just go, I have a Nissan Drift car, I'm gonna go buy now, buy now, buy now, buy now. It's like everything is made. You have to custom make it, you can't just go, oh, I'm gonna buy that and bolt it on and drive down the street. It's like, yeah. you can't I've put a six cylinder halfway into the car. I mean, coming onto the engine there, I mean, just look at this, like, there's my hand. It's so hard to gauge the scale. Yeah, just it's... again, just again, how far back the engine is and the and the firewall. You have changed every single detail on this car, and everything is just done. So I mean, there's so much detail. 
do you drive this on the streets? Yeah, I sh I do, but I shouldn't, and that's the problem. Like uh, it's twelve hundred horsepower on that. running, so it's like thirty psi, which is like nothing for it. It's just too much on the road. As much as I keep telling myself it's not a big deal and it's fine, it's it's all bad. Like it's all bad to but, drive. Yeah, it just handles differently to other cars I've got because of the weight distribution, and then you're on slicks and you sh you shouldn't be on the road, but. I'm an idiot and I keep doing it anyway. And, and in then, New Zealand, this is street legal? Um, yeah, so it's got a certification. Oh my goodness. Oh, Look at the detail. Can you smell the ethanol? Oh yeah, I can smell <laughs> it. Another S15 dash, same sequential gearbox that's in the other one, so. You got a lot of leg room here. You basically look out the side window. Yeah. Which is a real, again, out of it thing when you are driving it. You sit so low and it's quite just a weird feeling when you, you're almost legs are above you, kind of like mm -hmm. in a single seater. So it's just holding your weight up and it, it's just a different feeling. And you know, you're looking at out the side of the car and you're looking out the back window, the side window. It's just it's it's insane. Like you can see the seating position there. Is visibility good in this? Oh, it's terrible. You sit so low, so all I can see is the top of the turbo peaking and I just like look up and I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Like, oh my gosh. So no, it's a fun car. I, like, I've enjoyed building it and it's taken a while and it's, there's a lot of craft, like workmanship in it. A while it's is an really understatement. Well. Yeah, it's done really well. It's just one of those ones now where, not that it didn't have a purpose, but I just wanted the most heart out of everything. And I was like, I just want so much horsepower and I want it to this. And then when you actually get it and you use it, you're like, this is horrendous. Like, <laughs> Yeah. I'm glad that you would say I, that. I own it now. Yeah. I was in denial for so many years. I'm like, no, no, this is fine. This is absolutely 200 horsepower. is fine. It's no big deal. And then you actually start to try and use the car and you're like, I can't use, I, mm -hmm. I actually can't use the car. And everyone's like, oh, just turn it, turn the boost down, turn the power down. And because it is such a big frame turbo, it is real lazy. So you get nothing and then it's all on. It'll come on at five, but I rev it to 10. And then I guess nothing like this. Oh, What's yeah. the story on the That's Mondial? Old. It was the cheapest Ferrari on the market when I was younger. I'm gonna wreck a Ferrari, I'm gonna lower it, I'm gonna put her on wheels and I'm gonna drive it around. It's gonna be so cool. And I bought it for 21 grand and then within like a couple of years, they were like 25 grand. And then mm -hmm. three years later, they were 40 grand. And then I was like, oh, I can't really wreck it now. How did you have 21 grand to buy this for that oh, age? I sold an R32 GDR that I bought for nine grand and sold it for 18 grand, a lot of money for a GDR back yep. then. Um, so yeah, I've just always bought and sold cars when I was younger. And then if you guys notice right there, there's an R35 front bumper. Yeah. So what is the story on, I guess this, and what's in the garage so over there? So I've got a GT1 car R35, which was built by Dodson's, which was like a local, what originally was like a GDR tuning house. Um, they did a whole bunch of GT chassis ship them all around the world. They actually turned into like, you know, the ETS drag car and mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's one of them. And they went all around the world and ended up being drag cars instead of GT cars. Mm -hmm. So um, a guy I know, uh, Dwayne built them. He was working at Dodson's and then he originally had the last chassis that they built. He has an RX-7 and heaps of cool shit. Real clever fabricator. And he was like, do you want this? And I was like, not really. I've got heaps of shit already. And then, yeah, I bought it because I'm an idiot. And then right here, we've got an A86. Yeah, so this is my mate James's car. So we grew up together. So when I was doing the Subaru with mine, we were doing this at the same time. With him in it, it's like 780 kilo. Wow. He's a, he's a little guy, he's skinny, but that's light. <laughs> and you've got all the carbon up here, yeah, carbon no, roof. Carbon. All of the floor cut out, very little Toyota chassis and metal left. Um, quick change rear, flash quick change diff. We put the motor way in the weight distribution. So oh my like, goodness. This was an F20C Honda. So again, before the K day, you know how you're in K series everything now? Yeah. So this was well before anyone had really done stuff like this. So this is probably eight or 10 years old when we started it. So it was like the kind of pioneer for, for the Honda, the NA Honda. And then right here, little Miata. Yeah, little dad's car. So. Yeah, my family aren't car orientated people at all, like chartered accountants, like not into that kind of spending. Yeah. And dad just likes MX-5. So I had, I've had probably 10 MX-5s in my lifetime when I was younger. Wow. For some reason I just like, they were cheap here, they were like two grand, 1500 yeah. bucks, you get a real minter one. So I had those when I was younger, just used to bowl around in them and dad kind of liked them. He, me and him would go for drives in one and 
it was like a stage where I didn't own any for a long time and then Dad was like, oh, I kind of want another one and this one popped up at some like 60 to 50,000, 56,000k or something, hard topped. And it was like five grand or something, four grand. So yeah, that's his little thing. Now, I have one question. Can we hear any of the cars over there start? Absolutely, we can. We've already warned the children that we're going to do it. We've got to warn the kids in all of the neighboring communities <laughs> in all of Wellington. Normally, I have to text the next door neighbors and be like, yo, I'm moving the car, don't freak out. <laughs> that is crazy. That's when you know your car is loud. As worse as you think it is, and times it by like 100. Like so it's going to be louder than I expect? Yep. Free spoon the kids. Kids? We're on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> to be outside playing. Should we open the garage up? It would probably be sensible. Where should I stand so I don't go deaf? Oh no. Oh, not, bad, bad. not this far? No, nah, you'll be right. You say that, but you've heard it many times. Alright, here we go. I hope my microphone is still alive. What? Can you hear the car? Hi. What the heck? Yeah, he has a crazy car. Oh my ears. Like I plugged this one, this one I can still. That is loud. You told me I would be okay here. No. No. And that's got like a turbo on it, so it should be quieter. It's just oh my goodness. You build this exhaust? Yeah, it's full stainless exhaust. So it's four inch and then splits to two and three and a half with no resonators, which is probably the reason it's, it's just so long like, compared to the rest yeah. of the car. And this is legal in New Zealand streets? No, no. Allegedly, someone, you know, if you were to drive it around, say if you were to. Not that yeah. I do that, yeah. of course. Definitely. At all, not. Um, yeah, it's, it's all bad. It's loud. Oh my goodness. I cannot wait to see what car you build next. Yeah, got something planned. People that build cars like this cannot rest for long. Yeah, but you cannot rest. I'm like, no more, no more. And then I did this.